Welcome, today we're going to be taking apart an Alienware gaming laptop. This is the M15 or the model P79F with the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti video card. And to start out we're going to need a small Phillips head bit to remove the bottom cover. This is a 2.5. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and flip the laptop over. And we're going to remove all of the bottom case screws including the two on the back here. All right, once we have those case screws removed or loosened, we're gonna use the little gap we have here between the palm rest and the bottom case. kind of see it's already starting to separate so that's where the bottom case is going to come off of the palm rest and if it's catching anywhere just use your spudgy or flat tool to kind of pop it. Alright so a couple more pops and remove that bottom case. Alright, so it looks like Alienware made it uh, decently easy to upgrade their computers. Um, you can see the RAM is here on top. So we'll go ahead and remove that first just by spreading the little retainer bars. And once that stick flips up, we'll just pull it straight out. Alright, so the hard drive um, connector, just pull straight up on that and it'll pop out. But I'm going to go ahead um, and first remove the battery. So it looks like it's just about four screws and the one connector there. And then for our connector, we're just going to pop it straight up. And if you pull straight up, it should just pop out real easily without having uh, too much of a hassle. Alright, so we'll go ahead and remove our hard drive caddy. So we've already disconnected the little motherboard connection there, and we'll go ahead and remove the four screws on the outside. And then to remove your hard drive, just take off the two screws from each side. Alright, so now we can uh, start pulling the other stuff off of the motherboard. So, Wi-Fi card, looks like it's just one the one screw. And once you remove the little bracket, can pop up on those Wi-Fi antennas. And it'll just pop right off the card and you can slide it out of the slot. Alright, we'll go ahead and remove the little USB board here. Looks like just one screw. And with this type of connector, there's a little bar that's kind of flipped over onto the back side of the connector. So you're going to want to flip that little bar up. And then you can kind of use that to pull the uh, pull the cable out of the connector and we can remove the USB board all right so it looks like the DC jack um, is held down by a little bracket here 
Um, it looks like to replace the DC jack, you are gonna first have to remove the fan assembly. So we can go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and disconnect the uh, cooling fans and then we'll unscrew the heat sink. And with this type of connector, they just have a little notch or a little uh, tab on either side and you use that to wiggle the connector out. And then the pram battery over here, it's held on by some tape. Uh, just loosen that if you're planning on removing the motherboard. All right, so all of the uh, little screws here are uh, next to a stamp number. If you're reinstalling with new thermal paste, you're gonna to wanna to tighten in the order that's stamped on these. But as far as removal, it doesn't matter. The reason they do that is to tighten down the heat sink evenly so it doesn't squirt all the thermal paste out on one side. So these screws are retained on the other side and you can kind of figure they're loose as soon as you hear it click um, as you're loosening them. So just keep loosening them until you hear a little click and then you shouldn't have any problem taking the heat sink off. And it looks like there's another screw inside the cooling fan and I'm assuming on the other side as well. There's another screw down here that's a little bit recessed. It looks like it might actually be connected to the heat sink as well. So get the screws that are in the fans on both ends and the one little heat sink tab down here. All right, so I think we got them all. That's quite a bit of screws for a heat sink and fan assembly. And now we're just gonna kind of give the assembly a wiggle until we feel like it's kind of broken loose. If the, the thermal paste is a little bit old, it might be pretty hard to remove it because um, it'll act as an adhesive. And we need to do one more screw over on this side. So definitely look on both ends of the heat sink because they have placed a lot of screws on both sides as well as all the screws that are holding on the middle part. So we'll go ahead and lift up carefully, flip it over, and we have removed the fan assembly. All right, so as you can see, the DC jack was kind of buried under that fan, so now we can go ahead and remove the bracket. And we'll just pull that DC jack straight up and out of its little holder. Undo the little taped adhesive. Now this type of connector can be kind of tricky, but it looks like we've got plenty of plenty of room here to grab it with our fingernails. So this one actually came out pretty easy. So just pull with the fingernails while you're wiggling. It should come right out. Okay, so we are ready to remove this motherboard. Um, so now we'll go ahead and go around and disconnect everything that's connected to it. This type of connector is also the little swing up bar type. So just pull that up so it can release from the back of that connector and just pull it laterally out. Looks like we have another connector over here. It looks like for the webcam. Uh, this one has little tabs on either side, so just use your fingernails and pull it straight out of that little connector. Pram battery, this can stay connected to the motherboard. It saves the uh, BIOS information. 
Looks like we have another connector over here for the speaker. Same deal, just take that out with your fingernails. And for the keyboard and touchpad, it just flips up, the little uh, retainer part flips up. Then once you remove the ribbon, just push it back down. Okay. All right, so we will go ahead and remove all of the screws around the motherboard. I'm not sure if this port, um, let's see how long these screws are. For that port on the side, we might end up having to remove these two. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove them anyways. And I just allow that little bracket to come off. Okay, so I see now what they did. Um, definitely, you're gonna have to remove the little bracket to get the motherboard off. They have two little little posts coming up through the motherboard inside the little motherboard cutouts. So, remove that. One looks like another small ribbon here with a flip-up type retainer. All right, so we'll go ahead and remove the screws. All right, so we got all the screws out. We'll go ahead and give one last check to these ribbons and make sure that we've, I we could double check that we've disconnected everything from the motherboard. And now we'll just kind of lift up while giving it a little wiggle. And if it feels like it's loose, then we're good to go. And just, it's always a good idea to slowly flip it over because sometimes some manufacturers will put ribbons on the back side. So that is how you remove the motherboard. All right, so we are left with a touchpad and a keyboard and the display assembly is uh, still connected to the uh, palm rest here. So we're gonna end up uh, removing that. Looks like we're gonna have to remove this little tape cover to get to the power button and the power button is just a few screws. All right, so if you wanna replace your keyboard, um, you can see there's a series of screws that need to be removed from the back and then it will come up and out of the palm rest. Uh, this we're going to go ahead and leave as a complete assembly and you can see for the touchpad there's just a series of uh, screws on the backing plate holding that in so you can just remove those screws and you should be able to replace that touchpad and the speakers are just held on by some kind of anti-vibration rubber grommets so just pop up and out and then you'll have to kind of weave the little cord in or out of the little retainers so looking at our display side, we have the webcam and Wi-Fi antennas disconnected from everything as well as the video cable. So as soon as we remove the hinge screws, we should be able to uh, remove the palm rest from the assembly. Just checking what position the uh, hinges need to be in to aid removal. It looks like a slightly open position will work. So we're gonna support the palm rest with our other hand and then remove the two remaining screws for that hinge. The hinges, I should say. Okay, so as long as you have the hinges cocked up a little bit, you should be able to remove that uh, palm rest no problem. And then we can move on to the display. All 
All right, so like with most uh, computers, the bezel needs to be separated from the back cover uh, to be able to get in and replace the screen or the Wi-Fi antennas. So the seam is gonna be right here on the very front of the bezel. Um, you can kinda, I'll move it over so you can see the, it's a little bit recessed, so you're actually getting the bezel from the front of the laptop. And then once you get it pried up a little bit, then you should be able to run your flat tool um, all the way around. And unfortunately, it looks like Alienware has decided to use a really, really strong adhesive to uh, attach this bezel. Um, but just as you can see, the the bezel will come out of the back cover by prying from the front. And once you have the bezel released, then you'll be able to just, there's a couple screws for each side of the screen and a few screws holding on the hinges. I mean, once you remove the bezel, it's obvious what, um, how to replace the inner parts. But since I do not have a heat gun, um, I'm not gonna attempt to pull this bezel off. And if you do not have a flat object, uh, like a spudgy or something to pry on that, and the heat gun, um, I would strongly recommend against trying to remove this bezel uh, because the LCD is, you know, it's LED, so it's really thin. Um, so any amount of like decent pressure anywhere along it is just going to crack it. So if you don't have a heat gun and you're not really experienced with, uh, you know, removing like MacBook screens or any other screen that's you know heavily adhered, um, I would just consider buying this. Uh, buying the LCD assembly as a complete assembly. So that is how you disassemble um, the vast majority of an Alienware M15. This particular model was the P79F. So if this video helped you or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you.